Okay, welcome back to the Audulous module library tutorial. This is 1.5, the clock module. Okay, I'll read the patch first, then we can explore it a little bit. Up until now, we've been using the clock tile, which has an intentionally limited set of controls. The bigger relative of the clock tile is the clock module. If you toggle the switch on the top of the module, you can change between BPM and free running modes. The names at the top of the slider will also change. So we have this toggle switch here. I can switch in between, so there's Hertz. BPM, and you can see some other things that change here is uh, the Hertz value down here from, excuse me, BPM to Hertz. And then as well, you have the uh, divide by eight changing to a max uh, control there. Okay, so we'll come to that in a sec. Uh, the PW control, the pulse width control works the same as before, it's just a slider now. So it's, it's in a different form factor, but it works exactly the same where this is like completely off, completely on, and anywhere in between. You can also remotely start and stop the clock module like this. So we have the button module here, the button tile here, uh, and we can turn it off and on again. Off and on. Uh, you can start and stop the clock with a run button. When you restart the clock, it always starts on high. Oh, and so we have to disconnect this. So we can stop and start, stop and start. When this is plugged in, it overrides the control that is uh, right here. So in free running mode, the knob sets the maximum speed of the clock. So we were talking about free running mode here. That's the maximum speed of the clock. And in BPM mode, you can select a subdivision here. So if divide by eight is selected, then the module will output eighth notes at the given BPM. So this, these are eighth notes at 120 uh, BPM. If uh, divided by 16 is selected, uh, the module will output 16th notes at 120 BPM. So it goes all the way up to 64 and all the way down to one measure right there. So the clock module has both a sync input right here and a sync output. So that's the sync output there. The sync output can be used to synchronize all of the modules in your patches that take a sync input. So again, if we turn this off, you can see that's a sync input. And so when I press this button, it will turn the sync signal on, and so everything that has a sync input that this is connected to will be restarted from the stop. So you turn it off and it restarts. That sync signal can be sent out to a ton of modules at once, and this way it keeps them lockstep in, in, in time with each other. Uh, and then here you obviously have the gate output, and it goes down to the waveform node here, just like the other smaller module now. What you can see here is, is uh, perhaps you can you can see the thinking that I had behind creating the tiles and the modules. The modules have a lot more controls and a lot more things going on them. They're a lot more useful, but they can also be a little overwhelming, uh, especially to a beginner. So that's why I made these tiles so that they're really simple and they're really concentrated on the core of what that module does. You know, a clock creates a clock signal and you have the, the speed and the pulse width. Those are the two kind of uh, primary uh, uh, parameters of a clock that you want to have control over. And that's why when we have the, the, the clock module, uh, it's the same feature set as the tile, but with a few more things added onto it that make it a little more musically useful to uh, work with. And we'll see why, especially with this subdivision uh, output with the BPM, why that's so useful in the next few patches where we talk about clock multipliers and dividers. Okay, see you in the next one.